welcome to a new Harry's Farm video and this is not going to be a regular sort of look around the farm job. I'm going to look at this Ineos Grenadier in more detail because I've had it a week and I just want to look how it works as a farm car. If you want to know more about on-road performance etc then I have done a Harry's Garage review on my other channel. I'll put a link up there but is this a working car? That's what I'm interested to look at in this review. Now, this model is the Station Wagon Trial Master Edition 5 seat. And this is the most expensive version you can get. Well, equal to the Field Master Edition. And the difference between the two is the Trial Master is meant to be the off-road version. It's definitely gonna do off-road work, hence the off-road tires, diff locks, snorkel on that side all come as standard the field master has slightly plusher upholstery lever and has alloy wheels optional and normal well not normal road tires but road tires suitable for this car now this also uh, most expensive i say is sixty-nine thousand pounds with a few extras sort of 72 ish if you, the cheapest one on offer is a utility wagon, which is the same as this, but two seats, and that starts at 55,000. There is going to be a pickup version coming as well, and they're talking about a pure EV version as well. But this is the one, and the backstory, I'm sure you know it. Uh, Sir Jim Radcliffe wanted to buy Old Defender off JLR when it ceased production. JLR said no, so Sir Jim Radcliffe said, okay, I'll make my own then, and has set up this company to produce the Grenadier. Initially, it was going to be in the UK. It's actually a factory in France because Mercedes were leaving a, a fully um, kitted out factory in France. He took it over. That's where this car is produced. It has a BMW six cylinder engine. There's a choice of diesel or petrol, um, 249 horsepower in uh, diesel form 286 in petrol slightly more torque obviously with the diesel version i think it's 550 newton meters the power figures and the sort of general description of this car does match the defender d250 the, you know so defender 110 is pretty close to this and on price they're 61,000 before extras and there's lots of extras you can have on new defender but I'm, I would like to have had the utility model here to test all the pickup, but I think it's an opportunity just to see what it works as with this version. What it's else? very obvious it's a Defender copy, if you like, from the Starling. You sort of end up with this shape if you do a utilitarian off-roader like this. So the flat front wing sort of tops and the separate bonnet. There's this quite a big sort of bumper at the front. There's a winch optional on this if you want to fit it there. But there's, there's cooling and things going on here. I was surprised how big the, that front bumper arrangement was. There are auxiliary drive lights that have to be switched on separately from the main beam. And then underneath there is this sort of sump guard but it's not really a sump guard I had a look at it because it stops here because obviously there's live axles jumping up and down and you can't extend beyond that because you're just ruining the off-road but it's got two giant tow hooks yeah the chassis on this this is a ladder frame with live axles front and rear ye old way of making cars and identical to the old defender it's also on coil springs like the old defender so no air springs no adjustment on ride height going on here it's a big car it's about a foot longer than a defender 110 and there's a lot more space inside compared to the old defender again no surprises i put it on the waybridge and it's quite a heavy car. Uh, it went with me in it, 2,960 kilos, as you see it here. I think it's 2.8, I'm 80 kilos, so 2.880 or something like that. But it has these rock slider equipment here, quite beefy bars there, sill um, protectors, because this car has done 4,000 miles, because uh, it was original press car, they had a launch in an estate up in Scotland, and it's done, a, done an awful lot of work, this one, hence it's got a few extras on it. Other things on the outside, you can see there's lots of accessories you can buy for this car, and this is what all these are, they're sort of fixing points. What we're looking inside, it's got lots of electrical switches, because it's got ex exterior electric outlets here as you can see there come around the back and there's a very distinctive tailgate on this 
Now, I'm going to discuss some of the plus and minus points of this car. I think this is a bit of a minus point. It's a nice idea because when I had that Defender, the single tailgate was a bit of a pain, didn't have a big enough opening for me. This has a bigger opening because it's two um, doors. But you open on the small door and this is all quite stiff to move. And then it's a very small aperture when you do open it. You really have to open this as well to get proper access to the boot. And then you can see it's quite wide. So that's good. And this one is moves much easier than this awkward sort of single door. Um, tow bar doesn't come as standard. That was 600 pounds to have that fitted. There is a camera. If I just put that back there, there is a little camera. I've done some towing with it. And there's a camera there that just sees the top of the tow bar. So when you're actually backing up to a trailer, it does give you a hint of where the trailer is nothing under there, no secret compartments or anything like that. And the seats go down one stage, but that's all they do. They don't go properly flat. And the reason the seats don't go flat, if I open this up, the seat squad comes up and you will see in there, there is a battery, there is a charger for some reason, all the fuses, all the relays, they all hide under the rear bench seat. I find a bit odd because it means fundamentally you would never be able to fold those seats down. Right, driver gets much more space than old Defender, but it probably can't see in this light. There's a very strange sort of giant footrest on the left hand side. I've done this, I've photographed this in better light, but that is where the exhaust runs on here. And I mention it because it's a, I think is a bit of a flaw because it means your left foot is fixed. There's nowhere to move it as you drive around and it's pretty, makes the pedals a bit tight. If you're buying a left-hand drive um, Grenadier, it's a non-issue. Around the other side, loads of space and it hasn't got that exhaust hiding underneath that means a compromise in the footwell on this car. Um, your jack and tools hide under that seat there. Um, what else is there to see? You can't really see the interior in here. I'll discuss it when I take it outside and have a closer look. To make life more interesting, I've put boots on, um, wellies on, just to see how I get on driving in those. I haven't actually tried it because it's been warm and there's no mud around. Um, interior, I'm gonna start it up. Starts on a key. No, which is a rare thing these days. It's all bleeping at me why, because I haven't got a seat belt on. I'm just gonna get it out into daylight so you can sort of see. dash layout full of all sorts of stuff you can see this is a compass so this is whizzing round I'm now traveling east southeast on there um, this is your main screen there is no speedo in front of you it's all on here it's just a, a bank of warning lights in front of the wheel here and it starts with home and its radio and things I quite often choose off-road just it's a bit more interesting I'll do altitude stats so I'll put that on there we go, have those on. Here uh, underneath is rev counter, um, temperature, fuel, and what gear you're in and what you're doing there. Uh, 4,200 miles this car has done. 114 mile range of only half a tank, but I have just been mucking about off route. Down here, um, there we are, BMW gear selector, automatic gearbox only in uh, Grenadier. I think that's a good thing. It's much better off road. It's a softer getaway and you can change and hold gears manually with modern gearboxes. High, low, proper lever like the Defender again, and then you lock the centre diff by sliding that across. Steering, yes, steering. I don't get on with the steering because it's uh, rollable but if, because mainly it's nearly four turns lock to lock and the lock, um, turning circle on this is 13 and a half meters. The old Defender 110 was 12.8 meters and that was bad enough. So this is worse than a 110 Defender old school. New Defender is about 11.7, .7, so nearly two meters better turning circle and 2.7 turns lock to lock instead of this four. Anyway, what I'm going to do now, I've got a test hill. I'm going to go down to the test hill in a field and then we'll do a little bit on road. I sort of know it was going to do off-road very well. I'm, I'm intrigued whether it's going to catch 
on this hill because it's quite a, it's steep and then there's a sharp bit at the end that basically stops most cars and then it's the angle break over angle is quite acute right what I'm gonna do now because I'm in the field I'm gonna select off-road which I do on this button here and I have to do it again so yeah I'm definitely entering so I now have it all lit up the, the bit the annoying bit is I'd quite like to lock the diffs but I don't I have to wait because they're mechanical diffs I have to wait until they do so I'm going to leave the front and rear diffs unlocked because I I can't drive around the field with them locked really but if I was in mud I might be able to but it's so dry today I don't want to risk it right I'm going to go up here and yeah let's see how we get on here as I say the approach is very steep let's see if I can have to get a bit oh I've got a bit of revs now I'm not sure if I'm going to get up here just just did it uh, I have had one refusal going up there it I think it's the weight of this car and the fact I hadn't locked the diffs and if I compare that to that Defender long term I had on the farm, that strailed up there, because it's got electronic diffs, it's sorting out all sorts of stuff without me touching anything. And I know they want to make this an analog car, but with new technology, surely if Defender had continued and, and been developed into 23, the old one, I bet it would have had electronically controlled diffs. But there you go, that is a demonstration of it off-road. I know it can go off-road, and it would have got up there easier had I locked the diffs, but I haven't got time. If I press them, they don't engage. So I think I have to drive and perhaps put a bit of lock on. Check lock conditions. I just don't, well, let's press the right button, Metcalf. I just don't need the complication of trying to lock the diff before doing an obstacle. I just want to drive over the obstacle and carry on. So I know it can do it, but a bit of a miss for me, the fact it just doesn't do it automatically. All right, let's head out onto the road. On the move, it's relatively refined. Visibility out is okay. It's a bit like old Defender, <laughs> strange that. Uh, I think my main gripe is well, out the back window, it's pretty small, and you've got that giant spare wheel on the back that seems to be marked um, quite high up. And because it's a split tailgate, there's a big post in the middle about that wide that you can't see anything. And it's the same here, this B pillar, just when you can't do roundabouts and things, if you're, I'm just over six foot, and if you have the seat in this, that position, you're sort of turning, you know, if you're turning a junction, you want to check what's over your shoulder, you can't really see. But my biggest gripe is, I'll show you on the steering, I'm going to turn right here, and basically it doesn't self-centre the steering, there's lots of turns. Right, how many turns am I going to put on to turn right? There's quite a lot of turns, I turn right, if I let go, whoa, it'll head up into that verge there. It just doesn't self-centre the steering. I can't remember another modern car that doesn't. Rack and Pinion does. I, I'm, I'm perplexed by that one. It's all to do with caster angle and it's they put rollerball steering on cars so you don't get kicked back through the steering. Uh, when you're off-road and you hit a rock, it, it sort of nullifies the steering. The downside is that there's just not the self-centering that you might expect. I did go towing with this car and I put a car trailer behind one and a half tons, put 1600 car in it, so 3.1 tons total, and it towed it okay. I knew there was weight there, but it did better than expected. I just didn't like, again, the slow steering and the vagueness at speed. You just seem to be putting lots of corrections in because. A lot, you have to. You can move the steering quite a long way, and not a lot happens. Did between 17 and 19 mpg towing, which is probably one or two less than I got out of New Defender. 
the other thing I've noticed about it is visibility out. I'm surprised, I can just see the front of the front wings. Something with the relationship between the seat and the front wings, I, I, I thought I'd have more visibility of the four corners, but it does make you pretty reliant on the parking sensors when you're in a tight spot. The mirrors aren't massive, there's no blind spot indicators and that sort of thing. The other thing is payload. It doesn't take a ton in the back when it's such a heavy car, so at 28, I think it's got 700, ton, uh, 700 kilos it can carry in the back, but there has got a much bigger opening than new Defender, so it, it gets points back for that, but it's an N1 commercial rather than a full commercial because of that. And again, I'm going to put a load of lock on, and here we go, how many turns do I turn that? If I let go of the steering, yeah, it would head over there. I've got to pull it back to make it go straight. So that sort of is it for the road test on this car. I want to try a real base one. I don't think it works as a family car as it stands. There are too many compromises in there for me. But I admire Jim Radcliffe for actually getting this far. It is so hard to create a car company in 2022-23. It take the gestation has been a while five, six years, but he's created a car, he's got it on the market, it, the, it's a, feels more niche than I was expecting. I expected a much more um, multi-purpose rival than perhaps it is. There's Jeep Wrangler out there, Renegade, whatever, they've got ladder chassis, they're not quite as beefy as this. The trouble I think is cars like the VW Amarok, Tied to Hilux, Amazon, there's a load of them, all the Ford pickup cars. They've all taught us that you can have car like dynamics in your commercial vehicle and you eat miles in them. I can't see I would eat miles in this. I would get annoyed by that seating position, I get annoyed about the steering, and I don't know about its overall robustness and toughness. For another five years it has to prove itself in the market i love the accessories they're doing with it i'd love to see this as an adventure vehicle and to gain its spurs and become that vehicle but for my first initial try of this car it's not as quite as good as i had hoped in that role and the trouble is there's some very good rivals out there that are in this space they're slightly cheaper and they're known and they're better on road forever you know it can have the best off-road ability but you spend a lot of time on road and that's where this car misses for me it's not good enough on road so there you go that's my review of this car looking at it from a farmer perspective i hope you enjoyed it if you did well keep watching the videos there'll be more videos coming up very soon